The Senate will now consider the proposal from Senator Chandler, which has been circulated and shown on the dynamic red. Ask if the proposal is supported. Thank you. It is. Uh, with the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks, clerks, clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips. I call Senator Chandler to move the motion. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I move the motion. Thank you. Proceed. I rise to speak on this urgent motion in relation to the Labor Party and the Albanese government playing factional politics with Australia's foreign policy and national security. And that motion is that, in the opinion of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The urgent need to condemn the Albanese Labor government's latest broken election promise on Israel as a result of a backroom factional deal ahead of Labor's national conference, which unilaterally changes Australia's position and does nothing to advance Australia's long-standing position to support a lasting two-state solution in which Israel and Palestine coexist in peace and security within internationally recognised borders. Once again, yesterday the Labor government chose to play up to hard-left anti-Israel sentiment elements within its own party by rewriting our nation's foreign policy. We saw this happen back in October last year, when the Labor government's refusal to recognise Jerusalem as the capital of Israel was praised by terror groups, including Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas. And now the Labor government has once again done a dirty factional deal to appease the far left in their own party. A factional deal which has happened not because of any foreign policy imperative, but on a basis purely of trying to manage the political appearance of the Prime Minister and his Cabinet colleagues. For many Order. weeks now, we have known that something like this was coming. Labor sources have been talking openly about cutting various deals on foreign policy to get through their national conference next week without criticism of the Albanese government. And there is no question whatsoever that what was announced yesterday was one such dirty factional deal. Labor MPs have freely admitted as such, and I sincerely hope that Labor senators aren't going to come in here today and deny that this is what's happened. A Labor MP is quoted directly in today's Australian, confirming that this decision was a factional deal, to quote from that article. A right faction source said the new policy represented an olive branch to left-wing critics to minimise the argy-bargy next week in reference to their national conference. This Labor MP confirmed that as part of the factional deal, the government will, quote, beef up its language. Just as its faction-driven refusal to recognise the Israeli capital was welcomed by Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas, so too will this decision be welcomed by dangerous organisations and regimes which are not just violently opposed to the existence of Israel, but are also violently against the West, including Australia. Organisations like Hamas, like Hezbollah and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and the Islamic Republic of Iran and the IRGC, which fund those organisations and have, in recent months, been ramping up support and pressure on those organisations to commit terror attacks against Israel. The Albanese government has shown its willingness to spring into action within weeks and change our foreign policy to manage the media around its national conference and appease the anti-Israel elements, or is it now a majority, within the Labor Party. Yet in contrast, it is now six months and counting, and the Albanese government still hasn't managed to respond to a committee of this Senate's report on the emergency human rights situation in Iran. The Islamic Republic regime not only commits atrocities against its own people and against its critics abroad, but its leaders openly state their desire for Israel to disappear off the face of the earth. I can't help but observe the speed at which the Albanese government will move to adopt an anti-Israel position of its left faction, purely because a motion is anticipated to appear at their national conference next week, compared to six months of refusing to respond to a report of this Senate urging action in response to the abhorrent behaviour of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Where is the demand from the left faction within the Labor Party for the Albanese government to respond to the urgent recommendations of the Senate Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee on human rights abuses in Iran? I haven't heard those calls. I don't believe there's a motion relating to that at the national conference next week. Oh. Instead, what we get from this government 
is a factional deal which will only serve to embolden the Islamic Republic regime in its sponsorship and encouragement of terrorism against Israel. Thank you, Senator Chandler. Senator O'Neill. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy President. And I commence by saying Australia is a friend of peace. Australia is a friend of Israel. Australia is a friend of the people of the occupied Palestinian territories. I am a friend of peace. I am a friend of Israel. And I am a friend of the people of the occupied Palestinian territories. I'm also the chair of the friendship group here in the parliament for the state of Israel. And I'm very pleased to work alongside the, co the chair of the, uh, the chair in the other place, uh, Ms. Van Vakenu, who is the chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Palestine, because it is in proper, careful dialogue that we will do honour to our nation and strive towards peace. Peace can only reign in the Middle East if there are many of us all across the world who share the positions that I just articulated. And that, my fellow senators, is where we should be setting our sights on the worthy goal of peace in the Middle East, such an elusive but worthy goal, rather than what is happening here this afternoon, which sets its sights only on dissent, discontent and division. The Australian people have a right to expect better of us. This is why the motion is such a disappointment. I'd like to address the substance of the urgency motion that's put forward by Senator Chandler, and I do so as a senator for New South Wales, but also in my role as the chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Israel, a Labor senator. And I want to remind people that it was Doc Evatt, who as the president of the General Assembly from 1948 and 49 at the United Nations, served as chair of the ad hoc committee on the Palestinian question. And he said it was, in my view, something of a nature of a miracle that the nation of Israel became a reality. And we need to work with others multilaterally to continue to look for peace in the Middle East. The recent announcement by Foreign Minister Penny Wong returns the Australian government to its stated position of Israel settlements as illegal under international law, and it sees the readoption of the term Occupy Palestinian Territories. Now, the Albanese government views this alteration as maintaining consistency with our multilateral partners at the United Nations Security Council, with the U European Union and also with the United Kingdom. New Zealand uses these terms, as do many of our other international partners. And the government also views this rhetorical return as maintaining the long-standing classification that was shared by both, both major parties prior to 2014. Foreign Minister Downer referred to the territories as occupied, including in media releases and just responses to parliamentary questions. Foreign Minister Smith in 2009, Defence Minister Faulkner in 2010. The current deputy leader of Susan Lee used the term occupied and occupation in a speech to the House in 2011. 2014, Prime Minister Abbott referred to the Palestinian territories as disputed territories. His foreign minister confirmed there had been no policy change. They were occupied territories. So for the for the opposition to come in here and play mischief with this and pretend it's a change is absolutely a misrepresentation of reality. Let there be no doubt that in adopting this, these terms, the Australian government is reaffirming its commitment to a negotiated two-state solution in which Israel and a future Palestine state coexist in peace and security. The reaffirmation stands with the Australian government's strong support for the legitimacy and continued security of the state of Israel. The Australian government desires peace in all regions and quarters of the globe. This includes welcoming the Abrahamic Accords and the declared official relations between Israel and Morocco, Bahrain, Sudan and the United Arab Emirates, who join Jordan and Egypt in effect officially recognising Israel. The government recognises and respects Israel's right to defend itself in a uniquely challenging environment, and the government believes that the Abrahamic Accord fosters that protection and to ensure that peace is ultimately achieved. It's the Labor Party's continued policy 
without change that a two-state solution is vital to ensuring peace and security. I'm going to run out of time to speak more on this issue, and I hope we have the opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to peace in unity as a, as a um, part of the government, as, as a government for the whole nation, and we Thank need to do you, that Senator in a bipartisan and a multipartisan Senator Neal, your way. Time has expired. I'll call Senator Faruqi. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I am proud to be representing the Australian Greens in this place today as a party which long ago recognised Palestinian statehood and has the courage to call out Israel's systemic injustice for what it is, apartheid. Labour's shift in language is a small step forward, but is the bare minimum and has taken such a long time. Labour must catch up quickly with the reality of the daily injustices that Palestinians face in their homeland. Human Rights Watch has said it, Amnesty International has said it, the UN Special Rapporteur for Palestine has said it. It's time for the Australian government to say it. Israel is an apartheid state. The state of Israel continues to deny the right of self-determination to Palestinians and continues to dispossess them of their land. We will continue to call for the Foreign Minister to recognise that apartheid is occurring, raise concern about the far-right agenda of the Netanyahu government and recognise the statehood of Palestinians. Shamefully, there remains a bipartisan commitment to the denial of Palestinian rights and a minimisation of the crimes of the Israeli state. Palestinians for decades have been amongst the most oppressed people in the world. They are subject to daily humiliation, brutality and violence by the Israeli government. Just this week, Israeli forces killed three Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Every day, Palestinians are killed or imprisoned or have their houses destroyed and have their land taken by Israeli settlements. For 75 years, Palestinians have been betrayed by countries that refused to hold their persecutor, the State of Israel, to account and give a blank check of dip diplomatic cover to anything the State of Israel does. The Labour government has approved 23 military permits to Israel since March. The same Israeli army which perpetuates crimes against Palestinian people every single day. Not only is, the, is Australia silent, but the government is aiding and abetting this violence, oppression and systemic elimination of the Palestinian people. Australia is complicit and it's a disgrace. The Israeli government is the most far-right, extremist coalition government Israel, Israel has seen, and the human rights of Palestinians are being further diminished by the day under this horrific Netanyahu regime. Order. Yes, language matters, but this must be accompanied by taking real action for Palestinian human rights, including boycotting meetings with far-right Israeli ministers and placing targeted sanctions on Itamar Ben-Gavir and Bezalel Smotrich for their role in, infl in inflaming human rights abuses against Pal Palestinians. Labour must call the apartheid by its name and push for Palestinian rights of self-determination. Senator Scott. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, at, at the outset, before I make my remarks, I would like to note that, uh, as she knows, I deeply respect Senator O'Neill uh, and I respect the fact that she is uh, one of the co-chairs of Friends of Israel. But on this occasion, I do disagree with fundamental points raised during her uh, presentation to this chamber, albeit I recognise, no doubt, they're put in good faith. Uh, and the reason, the reason why I disagree with Senator O'Neill with respect to this point is that there were two limbs. There are two limbs to the change in government policy in this regard, which was announced by uh, Senator Wong in this chamber. The first limb is for the Australian government to adopt a policy that the settlement, settlements in these treaties are illegal under international law, and I'll speak to that in a moment. And the second limb is to refer to those territories not only just as occupied, Senator O'Neill, not just occupied, which you referred to in your speech, but as occupied Palestinian territories. That's the second limb. Now, that's important because the final status of both of these issues, both the legality of these settlements and also in, in which territory or 
under a two-state solution where some of these territories be located will be the subject of a final or should be the subject and can only be the subject of a permanent negotiation between Israel uh, and the relevant Palestinian counterparts. That is the only way this issue can be resolved, through a negotiation that permanently resolves these issues. And it does not help this, it does not help the process for this government, for this government to give its opinion with respect to the legality of those settlements when the Oslo Accords, the agreements which have been made with respect to the peacemaking process recognise that these are issues which can only per be permanently decided through a negotiated settlement. The final status of these issues can only be negotiated through a permanent settlement. So it does not help that process, which I recognise, Senator O'Neill, you and I are on the same page. Want to see two-state solution, peace in the Middle East. Absolutely on the same page. But the government's actions in the last week do not help that process. In relation to the illegal settlement assertion, can I, can I say this to the Foreign Minister? What consideration did the Australian government give in coming up to this decision with respect to an extraordinarily complicated matter of international law? What consideration was given to the mandates and resolutions of the League of Nations following World War I? What consideration was given to the boundaries, the armistice boundaries following the war of 1948 after Israel's independence was declared? What consideration, what consideration was given with respect to the boundaries, de facto boundaries that were adopted after the Six Day War in 1967? What consideration was given to the Jewish people's connection with some of these territories, some of their most holy sites? in these territories? What sort, of connect, what sort of consideration was given to those issues? And the answer is none. What was considered was the Labor Party's national conference this forthcoming weekend. That's what was considered. That's what was considered. The timing of this decision betrays that. That's what was considered. Not this extraordinarily complicated matter of international law, which has an overlay of it with respect to very Real-world issues for the people of Israel with respect to their safety and well-being. Nothing was considered in that regard. What was considered was the forthcoming National Conference of the Labor Party. The worst possible background to make such a sensitive foreign policy decision. And then the, last, the second point, I come back to that second limb. The wording adopted, and commentators have expressed views on this, the wording adopted by the Labor Party by referring to occupy Palestinian territories presupposes the outcome of a negotiated settlement process. That is totally inappropriate. This matter will not be resolved by international parties seeking to unilaterally impose their view on the parties most affected, namely the people of Israel and also the Palestinian representatives. That will not resolve this issue. It must be a negotiated settlement which achieves and ultimately uh, will hopefully achieve peace in the Middle East. Thank you. Before I call Senator McGrath, I just want to remind all senators to please direct uh, remarks through the chair, as respectful as they may be. Uh, but I'll call Senator McGrath. Thank you. Very, very respectful. Uh, Acting Deputy President, what we have here is a Labor government that is making international foreign policy based on internal factional whims. So if we have foreign policy being decided by factional bosses. And I, and I reference um, my, my good friend from Queensland, Senator Scar, in terms of his rundown of some of the history of Israel and the borders. But that is irrelevant to this discussion because foreign policy is being decided by factional bosses. So what we're seeing is that when the Labor Party gather in Brisbane next week, that the Prime Minister is, is playing factional games, is using foreign policy to, to in fact manage his own political party. And that is not just a national disgrace, that is an international disgrace. Because what 
does that message send to our allies? That, that our foreign policy is made up on the fly by a Prime Minister and Labor, Labor factional power brokers? Um, and I'll take, I'll take the interjection. Order. Order. I'll take the interjection from Senator O'Neill is that, that this is a very important issue. And our side, the coalition, do believe in a two-state solution. But let's, let's remember that Israel is the only democracy. Israel is the only liberal democracy in the Middle East. And I dare anyone in this chamber to go to the West Bank and see if you can have freedom of speech there. You won't. So let's just talk about what this is about. This is about freedom and democracy being thrown Senator to the wolves McGrath, of factual power brokers. I call Senator Ciccone and ask that Senator Ciccone be heard in silence. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy O'Neill. President. And uh, I think the interjection by Senator O'Neill, my good friend Senator O'Neill, is spot on. You know, you, you sort of have to wonder whether the, the contributions by some, uh, the, those on, on the opposite to Acting Deputy President, are actually trying to advocate for a one-state solution rather than a two-state solution. Um, but to be very clear, the government um, from the very start has made absolutely clear that the steps announced by Senator Wong do not prejudge any of the final status um, issues uh, but that, that allegedly those opposite are trying to claim. And, and to be absolutely clear, Australia will not be imposing um, its views of the final borders and boundaries, and should, and which should be the result of peace negotiations. And that is ultimately where we all should be focused on. You know, actually getting peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And it does not change our commitment to a negotiated two-state uh, solution. Indeed, it's because of our commitment pursuing peace, peace and stability uh, in that region, that we must call out the conduct by some of those that are undermining that. Those that are undermining that. The government has been very clear that the alteration of language is not about prejudging these final status issues. And of course, it's not changed the fact that Australia is a committed friend of Israel. We will continue to stand up against the unfair, one-eyed treatment of uh, Israel in many international forums. Continue to stand up and work with the Australian Jewish community against the scourge of anti-Semitism, which is often propagated by many conspiracy theorists uh, about the state of Israel and continue to recognise and celebrate the long history between our two great countries. Uh, Australia is very proud. You know, we are very, very proud uh, of our history as uh, one of the very first countries. In fact, we were the first country um, to vote in favour of the 1947 UN partition resolution, which ultimately led to the creation of the State of Israel. And then two years later, that's right, Senator O'Neill, the first voice, and two years later we established the diplomatic relationships that we so cherish today. So our friendship is deep. It is enduring, and the Australian government recognises the unique security situation and needs, and we re recognise that Israel's right to defend itself, as it should. So the, the policies that the Albanese government are guided by the principle of advancing that cause of peace and moving towards a two-state solution. And while any change in, la in language in this space rightly attracts a lot of attention and scrutiny, I would make the point that the language that was put forward by Minister Wong yesterday is something that is not new and is something that Senator O'Neill has made absolutely clear in her contributions just before. But let's also remember that back in 2018, then Prime Minister Scott Morrison also confirmed that Australia was subject to the United Nations Security Council resolutions that described the territory as illegally occupied. And it's always important to go back in history. And if you go back further, you can see this language used from the Fraser government all the way through to the Gillard government. But I also find interesting that somehow this issue with Palestine and Israel gets caught up in next week's national conference. Somehow there's a report out there from unnamed sources that the opposition want to play a bit of politics on this issue rather than actually seriously talking about how we 
all together can actually work and support that um, two-state solution peace process. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the contributions from some on the crossbench and, and you know, describing Israel as apartheid, you know, disgraceful language that's being used. But people need to understand that your actions can bring out the worst of some in this place and also in the community. And that is something that we need to be very careful. That is something we need to be Order. careful. And those Order. opposites want to play politics than rather work in, than work in with the government of the day on how we can achieve and support our friends in Israel. But you know, coming in here using uh, unnamed sources and so-called reporting of a conference, so maybe you also need to look upon your own selves and your own democratic processes around how your party organisation operates before you start throwing stones over the aisle. Senator Hughes. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Well, whilst the Labor left will be patting themselves on the back all around as they've succeeded in their push on behalf of Palestinians and further continue the denigration of Israel, there will be at least one name that won't rate a mention. In fact, these activists have either deliberately chosen to ignore or, worse, denied its existence. Abu Murkaye. Mr Murkaye a 25-year-old Palestinian man was shown in a grisly video that saw him being beheaded by an unidentified assailant. The suspect was arrested and questioned. A Palestinian who committed a horrific murder that had been motivated by Abu Murkiyeh's sexual identity. And this happened in October 2022, less than 12 months ago. Those in government, they're the champions of LGBT rights, you know, if you listen to them, but clearly not when it comes to Palestine. In fact, homosexuality remains so deeply shunned in the Palestinian society that in 2019 there was an Arab barometer poll that found that only 5 per cent of West Bank Palestinian respondents said society should tolerate homosexuality, in fact, the lowest number in the Arab world. So instead of supporting Israel, the place that many gay Palestinians flee to in genuine fear of their lives if they remain in Palestine territories, it's Tel Aviv in Israel that hosts a large pride event. But they ignore this fact as they continue their left-wing crusade. And we only saw this week Minister Wong trying to tie gender equality values on our Pacific neighbours if they want to receive Australian aid. But clearly the same rules don't apply when it comes to the Palestinians. There is very broad global will that a two-state solution can be reached. But now, before that can happen, before those who actually live in Israel are affected every day by this issue, well, there's no need to worry because the ALP caucus has been able to draw up lines on a map to determine where borders can be. The ALP caucus has now settled the dispute, all while settling its own internal factional disputes. Just this year, Minister Wong claimed in Senate estimates that we do not support unilateral actions which reduce the prospects of a just two-state solution. Well, clearly that was mincing information. When it comes to trying to calm the factional farm over AUKUS, with around 40 ALP branches about to oppose it at the national conference, clearly this is a government that is happy to throw Israel under the bus. And you know, I'd just like to draw attention because I noticed that no one from the left of the Labor Party would come in and speak to this, and in fact that it's had to have to right ALP members who are known to have strong connections to Israel and, and Senator O'Neill. I do credit you with being the deputy co-chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Israel and the work that you do there. And I know Senator Coney has just returned, but we did hear the interjections uh, from other senators coming from that side of the chamber. And of course, we heard the disgraceful contribution by the Greens. I mean, the fact that they talk about uh, human rights abuses. Well, may I just remind the Greens of Abu Murkiyeh and what happened to him simply for being gay. But of course, 
those up there that will scream the loudest about supporting LGBT, but not if you're a Palestinian. If you're a gay Palestinian person that flees to Israel to escape persecution, you still refer to Israel somehow being an apartheid state. Well, you might want to go talk to some gay Palestinians and see how they feel about their treatment by their own people. But considering, uh, coming back to the ALP's decision, considering what the Australian Israel and Jewish Affairs Council has referred to by Labor as profoundly disappointing, and the Australian Jewish Association described this move by Labor as hostile, we know that there wasn't consultation there. So now this Labor government needs to be up front and tell the Australian people, and particularly Jewish Australians, if they consulted the Australian Israeli government or the ambassador. Though we did learn today that the department, not the minister, made a call to the Israeli ambassador. And who in the Palestinian authorities were consulted? When and where and whose bidding are they doing? Thank you. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Chandler be agreed to? All those that, in that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. Aye. I believe the noes have it. Aye. Ayes have it. Is the division required? Yes. Ring the bell for four minutes. Scott.
Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Chandler be agreed to. All those of that opinion will move to the right of the chair and those opposed will move to the left of the chair. I appoint Senator Scar as teller for the eyes and Senator Ciccone as tellers for the nose. The result of the division is 26 ayes and 30 noes, therefore it is defeated.